Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video we're making this beautiful giant off the mat Easter sign. This is a really really pretty design with lots of spring flowers and details for the Easter story in the background. It comes blank along the sign part so you can add whatever text you want. And even though this is 18 inches, it comes in sections. You can see where I've taped the different bits together. So you can still cut it from 12 by 12, A4, or US letter card on a regular sized Cricut mat. Now you'll notice a couple of things throughout this video where I kind of discovered things I needed to tweak on the file. One of which is that I forgot to add the holes in the top to hang it up with ribbon. So um, don't worry if you're looking at this video and thinking, how do I hang it? The version you get will have those holes in it to hang it up. And just look at all the layers. If I go like this, you can see just how thick it is on those sides. There is so much going on. I'm just trying to show you all the different depth. That's quite a good view. You can see how many bits of card there are to make up this beautiful sign. It's definitely a project which is gonna keep you busy and it's so worth it as it's beautiful when finished. So let's find out where to get the free SVG file to make this project on your Cricut. You can download the free cutting file for this project at craftwithsarah.com forward slash free dash SVGs or follow the link in the description of this video to go straight to the download page. The download comes in a zip folder and you need to unzip this before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder, it's time to get the SVG file into Cricut Design Space. Open up Design Space and start a new project, then go to Upload over on the left and then Upload Image. You can then either click Browse to find a file on your computer or drag and drop it in. Make sure you choose the unzipped version of your download folder and then the file to select is the one which starts SVG in the file name. Click and drag that in and this is what it looks like. Press Upload. And it might take a little while because it's quite a big file, but then it will appear in your recent upload. So you can click it to get the green border and then press add to canvas. It loads in at almost the correct size. It's just the tiniest bit out. So you can leave it as it is if you want to, or you can change it to a... Um, to match exactly the size in the tutorial, uh, which is 18.5 inches wide and 9.75 inches tall. You see, it didn't even look like that changed because it was so close. I'm not quite sure why it's not loading in at the exact size I wanted, but it doesn't really matter either way. Design space has recently changed so that now all your layers appear closed up by default when you load a new design in. You can click the little arrow here and then you'll see them all again. So this one has a lot of pieces to it. You can scroll all the way down. The reason that we can make this so big on a regular size Cricut mat is because the bigger pieces come in sections. For example, here you can see we've got a right side, which is this brown here, and then click the layer underneath, and that corresponds to the left side. And that's the same for all the big pieces. They're all broken up into different parts. Your biggest one is the sky at the back, which will be cut from four sheets of card and also the kind of pale yellow that makes up the cloud, which is also four sheets of card. I think there might be a couple of others that are four too. We don't actually need to change anything in the layers panel. I just wanted to show you everything that was there. What we do need to do though is add some text onto our sign. Click into text and then you can start typing out your wording. You can put whatever you want here. I'm going to use, he is risen. Because this is so big, I'm actually gonna do each word separately so that I know I'll be able to cut it from my regular sheets of cardstock. I'll start with the he, make it a bit bigger. And I want to change the font to something a little bit prettier. So I'll double click and go into the drop down. Now I've already decided on my font. It's a Cricut Access font. It's called Double Whipped 
So I just typed whipped into the search and then it comes up here. The reason that I think this is a good font choice is the letters are nice and thick, so it'll be easy to cut out from cardstock. And I like the swirls on them. It's a nice pretty font which matches in with the delicate flowers and the other elements in the design. And also, although this one, the letters are separate, you'll see in a minute when I get onto the word risen that most of the letters will be touching and all joined together, which will make it much easier to stick onto the sign because if lots of the letters are joined together, that's only one bit of card you've got to stick on rather than every letter individually. So there's my he. Then to make another one where it's exactly the same size, duplicate the layer in the layers panel. That means that your font size will stay the same. So then we can change that and do an is. And then duplicate one more time. And I'll write out risen. So you can see now what I was talking about with those letters all touching. Okay, then position this. If you want to resize it now, so I think this is maybe a little small, select all the layers by clicking one of them, press shift in the on your keyboard and choose the others. And that means you can resize them all at the same time. So you know everything's going to stay in proportion. And I think I will do these in the kind of orangey yellow that's used in the middle of the daffodils. Now that's looking nice, but I think we can make it a little bit better by giving an offset to the wording to help it stand out a little bit more. So I'll click on one of those and then press offset in the top. I'll go a little bit thinner than that. Maybe not 0.15. Yep, I like that. That's a good size border. So I'll press apply. And we'll go for maybe the same color as um, my little cloud there. Now I'm not keen on the fact that there's a tiny little hole in this offset. I think that would be a little tricky for the Cricut to cut. We can fill that in by pressing the contour button. Click the little piece that we want to remove and then close. And you see that is now filled in. Let's do the same on the ears. So click the layer, press offset. It should remember the exact setting, which is great. So I just need to press apply and then change the color. There aren't any little bits to take out on that one. Then on my risen, I'll go into offset and apply change the color. There are some little holes on this one, so I'll contour them out. And there we go, that is looking good. I like the size. And when this is actually stuck onto the sign, it will go underneath these flowers. So the flowers are gonna cover over it a little bit, which is gonna look really pretty. And there we have it, that's everything we need to do. So we can just go ahead now and press make. It will ask you if you want to save. I'm not going to save just in this case, but if you think um, you'd like to make your project again or if you're not quite ready to cut it just now, definitely go ahead and save it so you don't have to make all those changes again. There are a lot of colors in this giant sign and a lot of mats because there are so many beautiful details to make. You can change the paper size in here in these drop downs, and you will need to do that for every single color. You might find when you do that that you end up with some sheets where you think you can probably combine it. For instance, I'm wondering if this white will fit on here with these flowers. To move things about, click the three little dots and then move object. Make sure you choose one that's the same color. I'm going to go for this one and then press confirm and that will move it. Then you'll need to just position things so that nothing overlaps because if it overlaps, it will not cut properly. You can rotate things with the arrow. Uh, I don't think I'm quite going to get all those on there without it overlapping. Oh, actually that's not overlapping. What is if I do that? There's just the tiniest gap there, so I think I'm good actually. 
So um, Designing Space thought I was going to need three of those sheets of white. Actually, I'll only need two. When you continue to connect to your Cricut machine, it will remove any that are now empty. So don't worry about that. So go ahead, work through all of your different colours, get your sheets looking how you want them to, and then get everything cut out from cardstock with your Cricut machine. Then it's time to start sticking. Here's my sign all cut out and I've laid everything on top of each other in the correct position to check that I'm happy with the colours and that I haven't forgotten anything. However, as with all my giant signs and layered designs, we need to start at the bottom and work upwards. So I'm going to move all of these apart, taking care to keep things in their positions as much as possible. For example, I'll keep all the flowers all lined up nicely as they are so that I don't have to worry about doing that again later. So what I'm going to do is just get all this moved apart and then we'll be left with just the very bottom layer which is the sky. Here are my base pieces which make up the sky and they've got little cutouts on them, these little triangles and this is how we'll know where to line everything up. And we'll start on one side and work our way along. So we'll start over here on the left and it doesn't matter which one you put on top the other one but you can see how this lines up. You can line it up along that triangle and along the shape at the top. So I'll add a little bit of glue down here. Make sure you don't go out any further than the triangle and then line this up so that the triangle perfectly overlaps and also so that it lines up nicely at the top too. It's good to spend a little bit of time on that overlap because the neater it is now, the better everything else will fit on top. And we've got the next one. This has got the little bird as an extra piece of overlap. Triangle and the bird to make sure I am definitely in the right place. And then finally this one here. I didn't put the lid back on my glue properly and now it is uh, drying out a little bit so it's not being very helpful. That's better, I just gave it a uh, good go with the needle. I think that's helped to unclog it a little. And there's that one. So this isn't, you know, the biggest giant sign I've ever done, but it is still big enough that, you know, it's going to make an impact when you've made it. But I think this is quite a nice size because it's not too overpowering when you display it. I'm just going to wait for that to dry a little bit better, although actually it's okay. And then we have a little piece of white to go behind the bird. that and then I'll go down all of my join lines with um, some sticky tape. I've just realised I've forgotten to put holes in the top to um, hang it up so I'll have to have a think about that one. I'm not sure you necessarily would hang this one up as much because it is smaller but it'd be nice to have the option, wouldn't it? So, okay, before you get these files, I'll add some holes in the top so it can be hung up. But for now, let's run the sticky tape down the join lines. It's always really frustrating when I notice something when I'm filming. I've looked at this file so much and I've only just seen it now. <laughs> we go. 
Next, we've got the pieces that make up um, the cloud. So I'll lie these into place first. And these go the other way around on your join lines. I think I actually stuck the wrong bit of white to the back there. It should have been this teeny tiny piece and the bigger one should have been for that, but that's okay, I'll just cut a random bit of um, white. Right, so that's how that will go. Actually, I think my biggest bit of white was supposed to be for here and then these are gonna be blue. <laughs> long time since this was cut out it's been waiting for me to stick together for a while so um having slight memory issues <laughs> I think that's right okay so we're gonna line this up and stick the pieces together but we're only sticking them to each other don't stick them to the blue yet as um We'll be sticking this one on with foam squares. Although this does have the triangle cutouts, I'm actually going to line it up with the edges of my blue instead because I want it to line up with that. So I'm not worrying too much about the triangles on this one, which is good because they uh, don't line up. <laughs> it's more important that it matches the edge of your blue. Then we can go all the way along here. And I'll do this one as well. Again, I'm matching it to the blue more than anything else. Okay, I need some glue along here too. Probably could have been a bit more generous with my glue. That overlap is quite a bit. There we are. And then turn it over and add sticky tape down all the join lines. Make sure your tape doesn't go over that diamond, otherwise you'll see it. I've just gone and grabbed another little bit of white card because I already used the bit that's supposed to go here. I might as well just tape it on, seeing as we've got some tape. There we go. Right. Put my needle in the glue. <laughs> Come on, there we are. Now I can add some foam squares to the back of this. Bigger foam squares are easier at this point because this is such a big piece. And I'm gonna put a real good amount on here as well as going around the edge. I'll also put some in this middle section because if you only go around the edge, it means there's nothing to support the cardstock and it is heavy because it's four whole sheets. So, um, we want to make sure there's stuff in the middle too. It gives it a really firm base for everything else to sit on. Because remember, this is going to be quite heavy with the amount of layers and card and flowers and grass and text and everything else that's going to go on top. So we'll give it the best chance of looking perfectly level by going a little overboard with the foam squares. Right, that looks good. So now I'm going to, uh, ooh, one more there, and then <laughs> peel the tops off to reveal the foam squares, the stickiness on the foam squares underneath. Now for the tricky part of lining this up. Okay, I'm going to use the left side and the bottom, which is straight.
Don't worry about the triangles. Just make sure it lines up to your right hand side and then gently drop it down. That way, if you're not happy, you can pick it up and move it quite easily. But that's looking pretty good. So I'll push down to seal. Next are these two pieces to make up the crosses at the back and the sunshine. These are both glue pieces to add on. It should cover that base colour exactly. This one you can line it up along the top and also this bit on the left. Okay, time for the next big bit. Next is this green and for this one I'm going to glue it on so it's a little bit easier <laughs> than the others because we can just glue it on one piece at a time. These pieces also have overlaps so worry about lining it up with your edge, the outline more than anything else. That's our important bit that we want to get right. Right, there's that one. Then there's this tiny piece of dark brown which goes around the edge of where the cave is. So just line that up. I put some glue on the back. Line that up around there. And next section is this brown. So we're now on to making up the bottom section of the cross. There's a little brown bit here to glue on to make the boulder for the front of the cave. Just line this on here so you can see. And that's what that one will look like. And these will also be glue. I just wanted to put it on there so you can see, but I think I will glue these ones too. We've still got an awful lot to go. <laughs> I don't want it to end up looking too thick. I think actually before you get this file, I'm gonna erase all these triangles and just leave them on the very bottom um, sky blue section because it's kind of confusing on the other layers when we're actually using the edges to line it up. So I will correct that. Can you tell that these don't get tested until they're actually videoed? <laughs> Sometimes they do. If it's a complicated design like the uh, 3D slot together ones, then they tend to get quite a bit of testing to get everything working exactly as it should be. But layered designs, no, <laughs> you just get done straight on video. Usually it works out okay, but sometimes, like today, not so much. That's the third bit, and then just one more. I'm just going to tear that bit off because I've gone a little bit out of sync somewhere, I think, because that flower doesn't quite line up for me. But I think I'm only a little bit out, so it's okay. Next is this darker piece of the cross. So it's the big bit of the cross and this will be glued on. Oops, that wasn't very clever, was it? <laughs> Just got my glue everywhere. Hopefully I won't notice when it's dry. Okay. Now we're moving on to the grass to make up the hills at the front. And you might notice I've got a bit of tape here. My card was gaping a little bit and coming apart. So I've just added that tape for stability. And then we have these two pieces, which will also be glued. You'll notice I've also glued on these tiny little uh, yellow flowers because I knew I was going to lose them if I didn't. So um, those were already glued on. And... Do this one at a time. Now 
Next, we're back to the foam squares with the next layer of the grass. And again, because I'm using quite thick cardstock, and just another bit of tape will help, I think. Just make sure if you are doing this, then um, it's not somewhere that you'll actually see. But no, that's good. Right, first I'll glue these two bits together. Let's see how much overlap there is. A fair bit. Quite nice to do a foam square layer, we've only done one so far. Right, again, I'm more worried about the outside lining up nicely. But also that bottom line needs to be straight. Okay. Then a bit of sticky tape over that joint. Yeah. And add the foam squares. There are my big foam squares, but I'm also going to use some little ones to go into some of the small gaps. It will just, again, just make sure everything sticks that little bit better. Not very many, but just a few. Those are a little bit too small, I'm not going to worry about them. All right, this can go on now. Once again, gently drop it into place. And then when you're happy, push down to stick. One more section of grass left, which is this last one, and this will be glued. Now, don't worry on this, that this flower doesn't end up um, being finished, you see there's a little gap there, it will um, all be covered up when we add the actual flower, the yellow flower on top. So don't worry about that bit. That's the background done. Next we're going to start building up our actual wooden sign part at the front. The next thing to do is to add the two white pieces that make up our sign. These are glue pieces. That's those two. And then next we'll be adding the text, but we'll use the darker brown pieces as a guide um, so that we will know where the edges are going to be. So lie them into place, but don't stick it yet. And get your text. I've already glued my small letters onto the offset. I want to add these on with foam, but I want them to look tucked under the brown, so it looks like it's just on the white and then there's a frame on top, which is why I'm using... Um, the brown is my guide to make sure everything is in the right place. So put all your letters on first before you stick anything because you do not want to start sticking and then realise you can't fit everything on. I'm being cheeky and using that R to cover the join line in the white to make it look a little bit more seamless. I'm happy with that. Where are my small foam squares? Here they are. Okay, let's do the ends first. You can glue on your letters if you prefer. If you've used quite a thin font, then um, it might be easier to glue rather than foam squares. Right, I can move that one now. I don't think I'm doing this particularly straight, but never mind. Okay, 
say that when I want to cover my join. There, and then take that one off. Alright. Straighten that one. Probably needs to be a little bit more. Oh dear, I'm causing a problem now. I didn't like that it was closer to one of the words than the other one, so I'm just fixing that. And then next we'll... Um, foam square these. I'm going to do one and then glue the overlap and then do the other. I'm trying to find my foam squares, my bigger ones. Here they are. Got too much going on. <laughs> oh look, they just fit in there. That is perfect. <laughs> For the first bit you put on, you can go all the way to the edge with your foam squares. But when we do the next one, we need to leave that bit so that we can glue it on the overlap. Let me try and get that in there. Right, this one lines up on... Oh, don't drop it like I just did. This one lines up on this side. You see that's going to overlap my text a little bit. And then this one, I need to leave my foam square just off this very edge bit. That will need to be glued. Start about there. That should be fine. Add some glue down the part that will overlap. There we are. Then we can stick this piece on. Mine isn't quite lining up. I'm not quite sure what I've done wrong. <laughs> Let's try this again. I'm hoping that will still line up nice, even though I've smudged the glue. Ugh. I wasn't expecting this bit to be tricky. <laughs> Right, I think that'll be okay. Um, great. All right, now is the lighter brown and thankfully this is glue, so it should go on a little easier. Maybe I'll start with the left this side, this time. That's strange that it doesn't, didn't fit. Okay, one. And now for number two. I might need a little bit of extra glue or just to put something heavy on that join. But for now it's okay. And that's all the big bits done. <laughs> oh, phew. This has been a complex giant sign. It's so thick at the bottom. You could probably stand up. No, not quite. Not quite stand up by itself. Right, now we can start on the different parts of the decoration. And I think I'll do the cross at the top first. Start with this bottom white piece. This will be foam squares. Then the detail on top, this is a glue layer. Very thin along those drapes, so be careful with your glue. There. And then we've got the two cross layers. Start with a solid one, this is a glue layer. 
There we go. And then the second one is also a glue layer. And then we've got the final bit of the cloth, the solid bit I use foam squares for. Then the detail piece on top will be glued. Foam squares on here. And there. And then glue on this one. They're thin and small. Beautiful. And now onto the flowers. There are three lilies and whilst they are slightly different in their designs, they'll all go on in exactly the same way. So I'm going to show you one lily, then I'll pause my camera and do the other two um, just to make this a little bit quicker because I think I've been uh, talking at you for quite a long time now. We'll start with the bottom bit of the green. This is a glue piece. And now I need to work out which one this was for. <laughs> I would have thought it would be that one. Maybe I've done it upside down. So maybe it's that one. No, nope, it fits there. There we go. <laughs> and then and this one, the next green piece. Let's add some foam squares on this one. I think the hardest bit will be lining up these petals. <laughs> that one. The big bit of the lily, the very bottom piece of the way, this is glue. The next one is foam squares. The next bit with the stems of the lily, this will be glued. And then very small. <laughs> and finally, the top petal is also glued. And now for the smallest bits of all, the little bits of pollen on the end. I'm going to add my glue directly to what's already on the sign and then line these up. You might want some tweezers or something for this. I'm going to use the needle that's normally in my glue. Oh no, I've just picked one of the bits up on my jumper. There were two here a minute ago and now there's only one. <laughs> oh no. They're so small as well, I'm never going to find that one. I might have to recut it. Um, right, which way round is this? I think it's that one. I wouldn't worry too much, but I think that's right. <laughs> Did you see that? I just flicked it away. Oh, goodness. It's definitely not that way. Okay, so I'm going to go and try and find that tiny little piece that I have just lost and I'll also stick my other lilies on and then I'll show you how to do the rest of the flowers. Here are all of my lilies done and I did find that tiny piece of orange on my floor which is amazing so I didn't have to recut it. This is looking beautiful, I'm so happy with it. And now we've just got the rest of the flowers to add. And we'll start with the one which goes up here. The bottom bit is this orange, which we will foam square. Gonna need the little tiny pieces for this one. Yeah. Then the yellow on top, I will foam as well. Even more tiny pieces. There. And then glue. The little green bit. <laughs> so hard to see. Glue that bit on top. Just goes there. Okay. For everything else, 
I'm going to put it in place just so I know I'm definitely putting the right bits in the right places. There's all my bits in place. You can see how it's going to end up. I'm not quite sure why I did that one white and that one's yellow. Probably just an oversight. I think I might recolour this one <laughs> to make it yellow to match that one because it's a little bit odd that they're different. So again, that'll be another tweak in your file over than mine. Um, but yeah, so I think it would... It would look nicer yellow, so we'll go with that. Okay, we'll start down here. I'll glue the green on. I think sometimes when you're looking at something for so long, you end up not seeing things. It's a bit like when you try and proofread your own work. It's so difficult to spot if you've made a mistake. Okay, I've got the daffodil main flower. And add a little foam, a bit of foam on this one. There. And then glue the middles on. There's two different layers. The solid one, which is the lighter colour. And then, if you want to, you can leave this dark a bit off because it is very thin. If you're worried about it looking messy with the glue, you can leave it off. Okay, then the top flower, the bottom solid piece, this will be foamed. There, and glue the bit with the hole in the middle on top. Beautiful. Moving on to these, and I'll add foam for the bottom bit, which is the bit with the two flowers joined together. Nice to line these up because you've got all the outlines, which makes it easier. Next is the blue. This is glue. <laughs> that rhymed. There. Then foam square for the daffodil petals. And once again, glue for that teeny tiny middle, which comes in two pieces. There. Another daffodil. And I think I'll glue the green. Oh no, have I just done that the wrong way around? Nope, that was right. <laughs> Foam the yellow. There. And glue the middle of the daffodil. And there we go. Next is these two little blue ones. We'll glue the green. This is the leaves. And then foam square on the solid flowers. And there. And glue on the ones with the holes. Daisy next. I will glue the leaves. You can probably sense a trend here. <laughs> Foam the yellow of the daisy. There. And then glue the white.
one left and I'm actually not going to stick this one because I want to recut it in those colours but I'll show you what I would do <laughs> if I wasn't recutting it so I'm going to add another layer I think will it just be one no I'm going to leave it as one so I'm going to recut this in yellow and then glue the flower on so this one will be glued so just pretend I've glued that one and then the green on top will also be glued on top of that so that one will be glued there and then we've got the solid of the flower to do foam squares so I'll put this straight on my green because that will stay the same there you go and then the blue Blue for glue, my new favourite saying. <laughs> okay, so I'll line that up as if it was stuck down just to give you the final vision. But just imagine it yellow. It'll be yellow. <laughs> and there we go. That was a long, long video. But my beautiful Easter, traditional Easter giant sign is now mostly all finished. And I love it. It's just, there's so much going on. It's so colorful and bright and cheery. And although it did take a long time to make, actually it was pretty straightforward um, because there wasn't a lot of bits that all kind of go together like the base. It was only really that one. Everything else you could then use the edges. So it ended up really nice and simple. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to make a giant Easter sign with your Cricut machine. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more Cricut crafts and Easter fun. If you make this, let me know in the comments what text you decide to put in the middle. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!